Good morning, I'm Harley Schlanger from LaRouche Pack with your daily update for July 13th, 2020. Halkazup LaRouche has just written a, an extremely important article about the absolute urgency of an immediate summit. Uh, in this case, endorsing the proposal from President Putin for a P5 summit, that is the permanent five members of the UN Security Council. Uh, what she argues is that in, in this present situation, with a multiplicity of crises ranging from the uh, unchecked pandemic, the uh, financial collapse globally, and the social chaos that's being unleashed that's propelling the world toward war, there's nothing that will work on the smaller scale than a series of meetings, especially an immediate summit, of the leading nations to take up solutions. And an example of this could be the meeting last week between uh, Lopez Obrador of Mexico and President Trump, where the two of them demonstrated that the ideological barriers and the profiles that exist that would prevent such a meeting from taking place can be overcome easily when you actually ha have a chance to sit down and talk. The same thing was true of the Putin Trump Helsinki summit, except the media hijacked it and tried to turn it into an example of Putin giving marching orders to Trump, which was a completely faked story. Now, what stands in the way of something like this happening? The Chinese want it, the Russians want it, the French want it. It now appears as though Boris Johnson, with his discussion of a Franklin Roosevelt style recovery policy for the United Kingdom, that he would be in favor of such a thing. And President Trump has repeatedly said he wants to meet with Putin, with Xi, with other leaders to establish a basis for cooperation. So what stands in the way? Well, what stands in the way is the continued lies and fabrications behind the so-called Russiagate story. Now, over the weekend, we saw how this emerged once again after President Trump commuted the sentence of Roger Stone last Friday. And in doing so, Trump essentially made the point that Roger was a victim of a witch hunt, that he did nothing wrong, that he was attacked uh, mercilessly and ruthlessly by an out of control special counsel. Now, how did the media respond to this? The Washington Post said, that this was another example of the president's decision to interfere with the nation's justice system. You had a Biden spokesman say that Trump abused his power. He lays waste to the norms and values that make our country a shining beacon to the rest of the world. Yeah, like when Biden was vice president and we destroyed Libya, destroyed Ukraine with Biden in charge of it, destroyed Syria. That's the beacon that they're talking about when President Trump was elected to put an end to these wars. Now, then you have George Romney, one of the biggest hypocrites, the senator from Utah, a Republican, the only Republican senator who voted to convict President Trump in the Senate trial. He said this was an unprecedented historic corruption. Well, that's completely absurd, but let's just get to uh, uh, the, the real story here. What, what was illegal that Roger Stone did, trying to find out what information WikiLeaks possessed. Now, we've seen a whole series of, of exposés from the House Intelligence Committee interviews that were released, 53 of them, in which person after person who had been charging Trump with collusion with Putin to, in the 2016 election, publicly, like Clapper, Brennan, go on the news, go on interviews, talking about the corruption, the Russian interference, when given an opportunity under oath to talk about it, admitted they had no evidence. The special counsel's report admitted no evidence of collusion. And then you have the, the story that, that was most important, the argument that everyone accepts as, as though it's a true fact that Russia hacked the Democratic National Committee uh, emails, the Clinton emails, the Podesta emails. And yet the president of CrowdStrike, Sean Henry, the only company that looked at the, at the server, that looked into the email story, admitted to the Congress, that House Intelligence Subcommittee, 
that there was no evidence that files had been exfiltrated. In other words, no files were hacked, which confirms what former National Security Agency technical advisor Bill Binney had said when Binney did the report for the Veteran Intelligence Professionals for Sanity, which showed that it was a thumb drive or some kind of download as opposed to a hack. And the Russians, by the way, were not able to get a thumb drive into the Democratic National Committee. So the whole story of Russian hacking is a lie. The story that the Russians gave the files to Julian Assange is a lie. And by the way, they're killing Julian Assange in a British prison to try to keep the cover-up going. Now, the Stone case just brings to the fore once again this kind of corruption. And in order to counter it, you had the Washington Post uh, give Robert Mueller room for an op-ed. Mueller, the bumbling, stumbling, uh, Inspector Clouseau-type special counsel, at least that's how he appeared when he spoke before the Congress, came up with a new series of lies to promote this. And by the way, the Washington Post has been guilty of lying from the beginning. You know, the one book after another from Post authors, like the one over my shoulder here, A Very Stable Genius, which won a Pulitzer Prize, Every other page, they talk about the Russian hack, the Russian interf interference, the Russian meddling. Maybe they should have gotten a prize for fiction, although their writing style is not very good. But this is typical of what we've been subjected to in this country, what Trump has called a witch hunt. Now, here's what Mueller wrote. He wrote, the work of the special counsel's office should speak for itself. Well, if it should speak for itself, why does he write an op-ed? The special counsel's office found nothing but perpetuated the lie of Russian hacking. Uh, Mueller goes on to say the Russian investigation was of paramount importance. Yes, paramount importance to sabotage Trump's willingness and ability to meet with the Russians to establish a friendly cooperative relationship. Mueller said Russia's actions were a threat to America's democracy. By July of 2016, he writes, WikiLeaks released emails stolen by Russian military intelligence. A blatant lie that Mueller put into the Washington Post. Then he cites the guilty pleas and convictions of eight individuals as proof of the success of his office. And here's his conclusion. We made every decision in Stone's case based solely on the facts and the law and in accordance with the rule of law. The men and women who conducted these investigations and prosecutions acted with the highest integrity. Claims to the contrary are false. These are more lies. Lies on top of lies. They knew there was no collaboration with Roger Stone, with WikiLeaks connected to the Trump team. The evidence that was cited against Stone, one of these stories came from Rick Gates, who was Manafort's deputy, who claimed he overheard a call in which Trump seemed to be discussing WikiLeaks with Stone. Then you have shady Steve Bannon saying that he believed Stone was a conduit to WikiLeaks, and yet when he testified before Congress, he said he had no evidence of that. So these are lies and innuendos and fake stories piled on top of each other. That's what the Russiagate story is, and it was designed to prevent President Trump from participating in such a summit as the one called for by Vladimir Putin. Now, let me just throw a couple more things in here. Uh, on Friday, a court in England ordered Christopher Steele's firm, Christopher Steele of the phony dossier about Trump being uh, compromised by Putin, his firm was ordered to pay fines for wrongly accusing two Russian businessmen of making illicit payments to Putin. This was part of the whole story, the Alpha Bank story, that this was connected to the WikiLeaks. The judge said the steps taken to verify the charges fell short of what would have been reasonable. Now, this is another example. Christopher Steele's report was used by the FBI, knowing it was false to get a FISA court warrant to spy on the Trump campaign. Now, the, one other thing, the Flynn case. The Flynn case, as you know, is an example of blatant fraud and, and uh, corruption by the FBI. There were new notes released from the Deputy Assistant Attorney General 
of an FBI report to the Justice Department on January 25th, 2017. This is after they reinstated the investigation of Flynn based on the perjury trap that was set up for him by Peter Strzok, the discredited former counterintelligence director of the FBI operations. The Deputy Attorney, Assistant Attorney General wrote that Flynn, of, of her notes of the report from the FBI, Flynn was very open and forthcoming and they believed he was telling the truth. So why was he charged with perjury? Because there was an intent to keep Flynn out of the National Security Agency, to keep Trump out of negotiations with the Russians and the Chinese. And as a result, our nation has gone through three and a half years of a president under attack based on fraud after fraud after fraud. Now, the time has come for the truth to come out. It's come out in bits and pieces. It has to come out in the form that I've just presented it, that we had a group of corrupt officials in the intelligence community working together with the Five Eyes, the British Intelligence Network, which concocted the whole story initially, that put the nation on a course toward war and chaos to protect a system which is collapsing. That's what Russiagate is. That's what the Stone case demonstrates. That's what the Flynn case demonstrates and the Manafort case. Corruption from the top, from Robert Mueller, from James Comey, from Clapper, from Brennan, and from Biden and Obama. And what was Biden doing? Biden was one of the people who ran the Ukraine coup, which was significant for moving NATO eastward for more confrontation and provocation against Russia. So if we end up in a war, it will be because too many people remain silent about the lies of these frauds and corrupt individuals. And for those of you watching this video, circulate this as widely as you can. Get people moving toward the truth. And the truth is that the president should follow through with his intent to meet with the Russians, to meet with the Chinese, to meet with these other governments the P5 members of the UN Security Council, to address the crises that confront all of us. To not do so would be one of the most blatant crimes in the history of the world. And it's a crime that's origin was with the whole Russiagate story against President Trump. So thanks for listening, and I'll be back again tomorrow with a morning update.